Hello friends, welcome to Medicine Hub 101. Today we will talk about journeys. For a long time I didn't upload any videos because I was busy a little bit. So let's go through this topic. So before going to the journeys, let's at first know what is journeys. That means I am asking for the definitions. So journeys it can be defined in terms of whenever in our body the you know bilirubin it will be elevated okay so normally you need to know that every day every day we produce there about 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 gram per day this much bilirubin is produced every day now this much bilirubin should be removed from our body okay now there is a range it's like 0 0.2 to 1.2 mg per dl is the normal range for the bilirubin in the blood okay now if we see let's suppose if i just draw a graph with respect to this one and i'm just taking this one 1.2 this one 2 this is like mg per dl just in terms of the milligram per deciliter now is the normal range now if we see from here if the amount is increased if the value increase up to this much okay that is coming to two the symptoms will be mild most of the symptoms will come but that will be mild types okay but if we see that whenever this curve it will be elevated more than two i mean whenever it will cross the value will be greater than 2 mg per day at the time we will see the different types of the symptoms okay now we can classify the jaundice in terms of whenever there will increase level of the bilirubin level in our bias and along with that we will see the yellow colorations in the skin within the mucosa and as well as in the interstitial fluid And also an important thing, there is a sclera of the eye. Okay, so we can define the jaundice whenever there will be increased level of the bilirubin, and at the, as a result, we will see the yellow colorations of the skin, mucosa, and interstitial fluid as well as the sclera. Okay, show the term that need to be remembered: hyper bilirubin. Okay. Another term we need to know that is icterus. What is icterus? That is also important. Now icterus when for let's suppose the bilirubin level has got increased, and as a result, if we see only the sclera, the sclera if we see only the sclera is getting the yellowish color, then you can just see the terms icterus. The most important thing regarding these things, whenever the symptoms of the jaundice will come, the first thing we will see the appearance in the sclera. Okay, you will see the sclera void. Within the sclera of the eye, there are some connective tissues, those are elastic in nature, elastin we can say. This bilirubin is having the higher affinity to get by with this elastin, as a result, you will see the yellow colorations there. Okay, <clears throat> now we need to talk about how the bilirubin is coming okay i will talk first the normal physiology of circumstances then i'll go to the path part okay so let me just this part because i have to say so our diagram parts so i already said you uh, whenever the bilirubin level that will be elevated more than two at the time we'll see the symptoms and the symptoms are basically within the skin the yellowish color of the skin the mucosa the interstitial fluid and in the sclera, okay, that is the known as icterus. <clears throat> now we know that uh, for let's suppose the RBC. Now we know for the RBC, living like how much? Life is one twenty days. Okay. Now whenever the RBCs are getting old, getting older, that is coming approximate near to one twenty days. At the time, you know, <coughs> this RBC will be not flexible. Why? The proteins that will be not uh, able that much to pass through the let's suppose the blood vessels. Okay. Now, whenever the fresh RBC, let's suppose from the bone marrow, this RBC has come out just right now. Then this RBC will be very flexible. I mean, they can pass through the blood vessels, the, like the narrow blood vessels. If I just say normally, 
narrow VV is transfer blood vessels, then they can pass through easily. Now if I see, okay, let me just, okay. not the right, you know, anatomically right, but for understanding purpose, I am saying. Now this RBC that can pass through the blood vessels easily, okay. Now we know that there are some structural proteins for the RBC, whenever the age will be, you know, 120 days or approximately 120, near 120 days, at that time, the various types of the proteins like this, spectrin, band, I3, I1, okay, like spectrin, these proteins will not be able to or that means the membrane integrity that will be lost the integrity of the membrane that will be lost because the proteins are not working that much okay and in within the RBC there is no another thing that they cannot generate any type of proteins like whenever the proteins are getting older then the RBC is not having the capacity to produce the proteins why because we know that RBC is lack of nucleus and if there is lack of nucleus Then we, we know that if the nucleus is not there, then the nuclear machinery is all the things will be not done there. Like there are no transcriptions, no translations, as a result, will not get the proteins. Okay, so the new protein that will not come out. Okay, now this whenever the older RBC will pass through, so like the blood vessels, like this narrow blood vessels, one of the important blood vessels within the spleen. Let's suppose if I just say this spleen part, and within this spleen, whenever through the blood vessels, they are going one of them. One of the important blood vessels that is known as cords of Billroth. Okay, whenever they will pass through these regions, this RBC will get struck. Okay, and there, there will be like what? The lysis of the RBC. Now, whenever there will be lysis of the RBC, okay, at that time we know, let's suppose this is the RBC. Okay, now whenever there will be lysis of the RBC at the time this macrophage will come. Let's suppose there is the macrophage. It will engulf the RBC. Now we know that there are various types of the component within the RBC. One of the components, let me write it here. This definite, definitely the RBC will have the membrane part also, like the cell membrane. Okay, there will be also one of the proteins, like outside structural proteins. And also there will be hemoglobin, I'm writing briefly HB stands for hemoglobin. Now within the membrane we know the components are what basically the lipid and proteins. Okay, so let me write it here proteins and lipids. So whenever there will be lysis of the RBC or hemolysis, at that time this lipids that will get converted into free fatty acid free fatty acid okay that will be utilized maybe by the macrophage for its own purpose and the protein we are getting the structure for the membrane that will get converted into the amino acids so, so we get from here the amino acids a stands for amino acids so, so we will see the depositions of the amino acids similarly whenever this protein will be denatured or this protein will be like broken as a result we will also get the what amino acid from here okay now the left is what the hemoglobin <coughs> now if you see the hemoglobin at first we need to know the structures of the hemoglobin okay so what is hemoglobin hemoglobin has nothing but a ring like structures okay let me just show it here like this okay so these are the Protoporphyrin ring, porphyrin ring, porphyrin, sorry, porphyrin. So there are we are seeing the four porphyrin rings. Okay, this is known as the protoporphyrin. Now, these rings along with that, there are in the middle. We see there is like the iron, Heme two plus. Okay, now this is the structure of a heme. This is the structure of a heme. So what is heme? Because we know within the hemoglobin we will get heme part, and another thing we will get the globin part. So globin, that's protein in nature, we know, and the heme part, I'm talking about right now, the heme part. So the heme, this is the structure of the heme, okay. Now, if I just add, let's suppose here, the chain of some amino acids, like for the globin, okay, two chains, 
and let suppose there is like that two more chains now this is alpha this is alpha let suppose this is beta this is beta chains so for the normal structures of the hemoglobin tetrameric here because the four rings along with the four globin chains so we are getting alpha to beta to chain here so this is the hba we already know so hba that stands for the two alpha and two beta chains okay amino acids so this is the <coughs> hba now if i just change here if i say the fetal hemoglobin which is having the more affinity for the oxygens just if we just uh, just do some changes within let's suppose let me just adding the gamma chains that will be hbf now hba to me are many types also so if you write 2 alpha plus 2 delta whatever it is so this will be the hba to here okay now <coughs> the thing that if the globin chain is broken down it also give the proteins and protein means the amino acid will get from here now from him what we will get okay from the his as a thing here now from him we know there is the iron part this iron will come outside from here and this iron will act with the protein after that it will get converted into the ferritin and this ferritin will be just you know polymerized it's all many types of the ferritin are here that will be known as the hemosiderin <coughs> And that will be uh, stored within the liver. Let's suppose the liver. Okay, that will be stored here in terms of in the form of the hemosiderin. Now, uh, hemosiderin that is like what depositions of the ferrous or ferri. Okay, sorry, ferrous if you do plus. Okay. Now, the thing we need to know here that if the deposition of the ferrous or ferri, whatever you can see here for right now, if it is a certain level that is not causing any type of the tissue damage, that is that will be known as the hemosiderin. But if we see the depositions of the Fe2 plus is severe and it started causing the tissue damage that is known as hemo hemochromatosis that is known as hemochromatosis chromatosis okay we understood <coughs> now let's come back so we got the protein is like the Fe2 plus part they have and we are getting this porphyrin ending part here okay from the porphyrin ending we have to know what we will get here from here we will get first of all that is the BWRD ok we will get the BWRD now there is an enzyme that will act here that is known as the heme oxygenase this heme oxygenase I am writing briefly heme oxygenase that will act here and that will help to convert the heme that means this part this ring parts into the BWRD and after that <coughs> What will we see here? This bilivardin again will be acted by the another enzymes. The name of the enzyme is bilivardin reductase. I am writing BR stands for bilivardin reductase. And that will convert this bilirubin into sorry, bilivardin into bilirubin. Okay, this bilirubin. Now this bilirubin will be gone to the circulations. Okay. Now if I say let's suppose this is blue bin, okay, let me just erase this part, then you will understand better the thing. So if I erase this part, now let's suppose there is the circulations. Now within these circulations, this blue bin will be taken. Okay. Now let's suppose the bilirubin here. Now this bilirubin can get deposited anywhere. It can go, go through any any, any tissue. So just for this regions, this liver or circulate a protein. Let's suppose the liver. Okay. <clears throat> now from here we'll get a. It will separate. Let's suppose the hepatocyte. Divorce. <coughs> Now it will secret a protein that is known as albumin, and this albumin will be get attached with this bilirubin. Okay, now we cannot say it's like the conjugated because when until the bilirubin is going to the liver, it will be not known as the conjugated bilirubin. Okay, so what is the another name for it? It will be unconjugated bilirubin. Now the whole complex we can say you see. Be, Now 
Okay. I'm conjugated a little bit. Like on right. You get it from the right. You are. Now, what will be the next phase? In the next phase, we will see this whole complex that will come to the hepatocyte cells. Let's suppose if there is the hepatocyte cells. Okay. Now, there are some receptors within these hepatocyte cells. I will talk about these things in the subsequent videos. This will come here and after that, this will be taken within the hepatocyte. Okay. After taken here, this albumin. Will be acted by an enzyme that is, you can write glucuronyl transferase. Okay, glucuronyl transferase, you can say, or you can say uric also here. That's first video. So, after that, we will see this unconjugated bilirubin that will get converted into the conjugated bilirubin. Okay, here if I write unconjugated bilirubin, I am writing here conjugated bilirubin. So, whenever this unconjugated bilirubin is coming within this liver, after that, that is acted by the glucuronyl transferase enzyme, then we are seeing what? That is getting converted into conjugated bilirubin. Now, let's suppose if on glucuronyl acid is added with the conjugated bilirubin, then it will be known as mono glucuronide conjugated bilirubin. If the two glucuronic acid is added with it, then it will be diuricular DCB. Okay. Now, from here, let's suppose all the things are happening within this liver hepatocytes. Then, what will we see? There are some, trans some type of the transporters. Some types of the transporters through which this bilirubins, conjugated bilirubin, that will come out within the JT systems. Okay. Now, it will be taken by the what? It will come again after that. Then the JT and ultimately let's suppose it is coming in this time. Okay. And after coming here, this conjugated bilirubin, I'm writing here. There are certain bacteria that will act here. Okay. And that will convert this conjugated bilirubin into estergoblin. And this hysterical that will come in terms of fecal matter and that will give the yellow spiral of the fecal. Hope you understood this part. Now what will we see here? This thing will get converted in another product that is known as the urobilin. Urobilin region, okay? Stercobilin region, another is urobilin region. Now this urobilin region, it will come in terms of the urine in urobilin or we will see some time, you know, some amount of the urobilin region that will be reabsorbed by this liver. I will talk about these things in the next part of the videos, okay. Then this is the normal physiological conditions, okay. How the bilirubin is produced and from where it is coming. In the next part of the videos, I will talk about the pathophysiologies and their complexes, okay. So if you are new then please do like, subscribe and press the bell icon and let me know whatever the videos do you want. Okay, then I will try to make you happy. Thank you for watching.